two o'clock. Oh, and to this that one? No, Clearly, no, just uh, meeting of the Tiviot Valley Community Board the 23rd of March 2023 open. Welcome. Because it's not connected. We have uh, no apologies that I'm aware of. As I see all the faces sitting around, I don't know need to be here. Um, <coughs> sir, sir, uh, no, 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 no. So oh, we've got on our agenda this morning or oh, this afternoon rather we've got um public forum and we have two speakers. This one, Mrs. Miller. Are you, both, are you both speaking, or is one of you speaking? Or you? So the rules around the um, makes the public forum is that we limit that time to five minutes, and that will be timed by Mr. Patricia on my right. Um, we've uh, to us and then we will either respond to questions or not. I mean, you should be aware there's a report that we we will be discussing later in the pitch, later in the meeting. <coughs> so you can take the floor. You can sit at the table. Yeah, if you both want to come to the table, bring two chairs. <coughs> Okay. Well, good morning, Mayor Cadigan. Oh, good afternoon, Mayor Cadigan, uh, the community board and council members. Thank, thank you for giving us the opportunity to speak today. Would it be possible for us to spend more time? I don't think so. But this simple road stop is in its eighth month, and the community board and council can see this is not a simple road stop, as mentioned in the agenda. Due to the current encroachment, we cannot legally access our two front doors, but any member of the public can and have done being on road reserve. It has taken many thousands of dollars in 33 years to get to this point. Our preferred option from the proposal report, the second agenda, is option two, which would see the stock credit being transferred to us for mill consideration. On the 28th of July, Linda Strunnett wrote uh, that we were able to have the third option being to transfer the land at mill consideration. We signed the application form on that basis. A few days later, that a third option was whisked away and it will not be the recommended option, as she said. Um, three months later, the road stopping reports are quite complex with a number of factors, policies and legislation needing to be considered. The complexities related to this report are compounded by your client's request for the land to be transferred at no consideration, as this is not consistent with council policy. Council offered option three. We didn't request it. Our main concern with the council report is we do not believe that sufficient weight or analysis has been applied to some very important factors, which is why we cancelled the 2nd of February forum. Um, the community board didn't receive our amendments for a flawed agenda seven months in the making. How can the council make proper decisions without all of the relevant facts being in front of them? The author of the report states that our preferred option, option two, would be inconsistent with the provisions of the council's voting policy. We requested a copy of that policy, but it was never received, so we found it ourselves. Um, and we've got the Meridian policy here. 
and um, we are a property owner uh, identifies a possible encroachment of a road on private property, the, the following process will follow. If the survey identifies as an encroachment, then council may refund property owner, the property owner the cost of reasonable survey expenses. Council may refund expenses when the annual budget provisions are left. When a sealed road encroachment has been identified by legal survey and the landowner is willing to legalise the encroachment, purchase of the land will be prioritised based on the extent of the encroachment, the length of time since the encroachment was identified to council and availability of funding. Um, we have not yet requested that council pay for our surveying expenses as we were expecting to receive the land in all consideration. However, we will need to request reimbursement to council for our surveying costs relating to the encroachment. It's council resolves that we must purchase a small use of strip of stock road at market valuation. Option two would see council sharing some of the costs of this exercise by way of transferring the land at no consideration. We're still willing to pay all the surveying legal limits council costs associated with this matter. Council ha has expressed discretion to agree to a cost sharing arrangement. And okay, yeah. the council may, in this discretion, determine that there is an element of public benefit to the proposed road stopping and may agree that the cost associated with the road stopping should be shared between the applicant and the council in such proportions as the council shall determine. Okay. Um, uh, by us paying the cost to regularise this encroachment, there is certainly public benefit to council. Council must consider sharing the costs where, quote, formed road is located on private property, which is the case with our land. Council is therefore required by its own policy to consider sharing the costs of this exercise. The council report is completely silent regarding the actual discretion council has regarded encroachment and sharing the cost of the road stopping. The board and council members deserve and would expect to have all relevant factors presented to them, which is certainly not the case here. Option two is a fair and reasonable compromise, which would effectively see council exercising its discretion in accordance with its own policy to share the costs of this exercise with us. Although we will pay all of the actual cost incurred, we are asserting that council should transfer the land to us for one dollar. There are other relevant factors which seem to have been missed from the report. As per our lawyer's letter on page 47 of the report, this exercise will likely cost us around 35000 and survey and valuation legal counsel and lens costs. This amount is incidentally equivalent uh, with a market value of 35000 This means that if we are forced to purchase the land for market value, we will effectively be paying double the market value for a thin, useless strip of land. There's nothing fair and equitable about that proposal. As we will already be paying an amount equivalent to the market valuation, we believe Council should exercise its discretion in accordance with its own revenue policy to share the costs by selling the land to us for a dollar. Council needs to take this factor into account, even if it's not in the report. Um, and we have... Oh, sorry to interrupt. That's... That's... Okay. Oh, I'm good. Okay. So... Has anyone got any questions I'd like to ask? How long has this been going on? 1866. If you like to look at it, that's right. We've been trying to resolve this. We've been 33 years on the property, but we didn't know until 2008 when we had the place surveyed. And that's been it. It wasn't on the limb. It was not on the limb. It was not on the limb. It was not on the limb. Any questions? Russell? I think um, that the council should relent and just uh, walk away. Russell is it's a the lot. Uh, right? We've Back. got this to discuss later. Right. Thank you. That's it.
Oh, yeah, we've got more. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, so moving on, we've got off most of the minutes from the last meeting. So take them as read. Yes. And yep, yep. Uh, um, can I have, and I'll move that they are true and correct. We thought we would need a second for that, please. Yeah, I'll send it. <clears throat> Those in favour say aye. Mm. Okay, item four on the agenda is declaration of interest. Members are reminded of their obligations in declaring any interest to the note of a um well, no, it's, uh, so I've got um a conflict of interest with item number um, yeah, in your report. So I'll have when we come to discuss it, I'll just step out of the chair and mark the take over for that uh, discussion. <coughs> Do I need to remove myself from the room or am I in okay. listen? Yeah. Right. So just note that interest is there. Um Right, the report. We have the mayor's report. Sorry? Hang on, what's it all have from that? Sorry. That's fine. So the next thing we're addressing is the application to stop part of the brain subscript. So Hell of a try. Well, yeah. Item twenty three point two point two. That's number fourteen. For everyone that's following the agenda, we have a series of reports. Have compiled the book from and you're going to talk to this. Yeah. 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 Which one? Um, yes, yeah. so we need to consider an application to stop part of um, drink on street. Um, it is a uh, member that has um, been on the table for some time, and I'll take the report as being read, mm -hmm. um, but we'll give a um, Recap of the situation. Um, the applicant's own property at 150 Brown Palm Street. It is a historic stone cottage. Um, the cottage does encroach onto the Neville Road and it has been that way since it was built in the um, late 1800s. Um, in 2009, the applicant uh, applied to um, move a split out onto the section and at that time it was identified that. Um, the encroachment was in place. Um, to fix the encroachment, um, the process is to apply to council to stop this road. Um, there are two types of encroachment, and just to address something that came up in the public session regarding the policy, um, public roading matters, um, which are referred to as something that council will fund and that council will pay for the land, are quite separate um, to um, this matter. In that case, they're talking about the formed road being formed over privately owned property. So that would be, for example, if maybe you were on um, perhaps a corner section or the road was a little bit, um, or the land was a little bit funny through a particular area, maybe the road, the leg road goes across here, but perhaps the creek that's been in there for a, 
I don't know, the donkey's years, whatever, and perhaps the form code is around here, but maybe that, for example, is on private property. And so when they talk about public um, roading matters in the um, roading policy, they are talking about council using the income for encroachment to road to legalise the encroachment of road. So we have stoppings and we have takings. Sometimes we will have a stopping and a taking together. Perhaps um, the road is the lead road might go like this, for example, but the formed road may go like this due to the topography of the area or perhaps just historically it was formed in the wrong place due to a misunderstanding. And so what you would do then is you would stop the portion of the road that is um, not informed and you would pay um, or compensate the private owner for that land and then you would legalise the formed road. So um, when you're talking about that public um, matter, we're talking about council sharing costs. Um, that is an example, and I'm not sure how many of you would remember, but this is very similar, or well, that instance would be very similar to the Driscoll matter, which was considered maybe 18 months ago, and the Driscoll um, applied to stop the type of road of um, Roxford East Road, and because of where they are located as you come around to pass the, the truck farm on the other side, um, part of the formed road actually um, encroaches onto their land um, on, on, on this side, on the rocks side, as opposed to the other bit, which um, actually steps out from the, the road and we legalise to the boundary. So that's the same type of thing. And so in that instance, the application to stop a stub of road that juts into the Bristol property um, resulted in a stopping and a taking, which is a legalisation of the formed road. And um, before we um, we divvied up which road was which land was being taken from the industry title for road, and which land was fenced into the paddock that was legal road, and we worked out how much um, road was being stopped and um, sold, less the um, road that was being taken or the land that was being taken from this road just called full road. So some of you might remember that um, instance. Um, and so this is an encroachment to the road, so it is very different different to um, that matter. And so an encroachment to road is, um, or any encroachment um, over a property boundary is the, um, uh, the owner of the property um, uh, issue to resolve or to manage. It is um, not um, the other property owner's um, responsibility. So as far as the policy goes, um, what we use the policy for is to determine um, whether it is a, um, a, a local government stopping or a public route stopping. And in this instance, because um, the road is, um, the application is stopped by um, the adjacent owner, it would be a public route set stopping. And it really is um, actually quite a simple stopping as far as it goes. Um, the cottage encroaches and it is the property owner's responsibility to resolve that encroachment. Um, the encroachment was recorded on a title on a title dating back to the 1970s. So can I stop you there? When you say the cottage encroaches, yes. the cottage encroaches the, the, the main green road. building you call yes. the cottage. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it encroaches about 25 square metres into the legal road. Um, so um, the applicants have um, applied to stop 268 square metres of road, which would increase their road frontage significantly, significantly and is um, far more land that is required to actually resolve the encroachment issue. Um, as you can see on page 22, there is um, an example of stopping a small area of land which would resolve the legal encroachment issue and it would um, come in a slightly lower fee, but I understand that the applicants um, would uh, they have a desire to stop the 268 square metre and um, um, like that. So um, a couple of factors which have come up is that it was uh, indicated to council that um, we would increase our rating um, revenue and rates don't actually work like that. Um, as far as it goes, the uh, 268 square metres um, might on, the, on this year's um, rates make $58 worth of difference to our rating revenue, but of course that would actually reduce $58 rating revenue um, that we were going to keep from everybody else because the rates are actually divided by all of those rating units. Um, if the 6,000 square metres was uh, stopped, it would have a negligible impact on the rating account of about $10. So, um, 
as far as that goes, and as far as the policy goes, the policy says that the applicants um, will pay all costs associated with um, a, an, an encroachment, a stopping for an encroachment, and uh, that includes the costs associated with the survey, um, with the purchase of the land at um, market valuation, and it has been also subject to the neighbour or any um, neighbouring party also agreeing and consenting to that stopping and the approval of the Minister of Lands. So, um, if you have any questions, I'm quite happy to ask those for you now. Yeah, I've got one. Um, so, with the value of the land, you know, say so it's been valued at what, $6,000? Uh, no, so I worked that out on the square meterage because you can, um, it doesn't take 268 square metres of road to be stopped to resolve the encroachment issue. The encroachment issue could be resolved by stopping um, the, yes, the, 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 the little red yes, um, yeah, on page 22. 46 square metres. Yes, 46 square metres. Um, and so um, the thing which, um, as far as the road goes, is simple land. It is vested in council, and council holds that land on behalf of you and me and everybody else. Um, we effectively own a, that land together. Um, so it is. It is land, there is title to it, it just doesn't show in um, GIS. There are part land road parcels um, under the GIS layer that shows as legal road. So this is legal road here. Yes, so that, that's the legal so, boundary. So this is private property. Yeah, so and this, this is, is the legal road. So how much value does this land have? $35,000. But you can't, where does that, where does that, Figure come from because um, you can't do anything with this. That was, you know, if you've got a parcel of land that you can't do anything with, it's the value. I know it does have a value, but it's valued at thirty-five thousand dollars. I don't see where the value comes from. Mm -hmm. the so it would be the equivalent of if the house actually encroached onto this property and it took two hundred and sixty-eight square metres to resolve that. It is the equivalent of asking a neighbour to to give them two hundred and sixty-eight um, square metres of property um, for nothing. Well, effectively, when you are looking at it from that perspective. Sure, we need to focus on uh, even can't dispute things like values and reasons why the report's been put out. We've got to focus yes, but I've got to, under, I've got to be able to understand it first. And so the $6,000 was worked out on a square metre of rate, so the $35,000 divided by the 268 yeah. square metres of times the 46 yeah. gets you to $6,025. Yeah. The, the, the stop is approved and the applicant's saying that it's not 368 square metres on road. That claim can be used to, you can then do something on that land. Yeah. So that land does have a value and associated it, with it. It could also have a purpose of eroding because it is legal road. So if we had a shortage of parking, for example, in Brosbury, which I know might not be a problem now, but in 25 years, you might want to put additional parking on the extra wide lengths of road and um, perhaps it becomes the hub of New Zealand and you might even charge for that and collect revenues from it. Well, it might not, but there's always a chance. We thought those things in the past to make it. Um, the, the issue regarding the, the adjacent property. Um, you mean the lot one? Yeah, lot one, and, and that's shown in, in, in figure eight. Um, I mean, assuming that we were to approve the stop, um, then how difficult would it be for that covenant to be put in place? And um, so there would be something between the actual yeah. and the owner of lot one. So um, lot one, uh, the owner of lot one is, uh, it seems to be quite um, resistant at this time because she has some very serious concerns regarding the loss of light and um, the, the small window. And her concern is that um, planting or fences could be constructed through the area. Um, whereby she then was living in the shade of a, um, a large fence, which will then remove her view. So the line. survey, that survey line along the front there is not in question at all in, in terms of that doorway and that window. That, Sorry, that, that, the, start of so so the, the survey of the frontage of this window and that doorway is not in question. That's 
it's oh no so that is the legal boundary so yeah, that is yeah. that is the legal road and, and this was an example of mm. how the agreement might be reached between mm. those two parties yeah um because yeah. what is actually um possibly something that might stop this before they can get off the table each day is if the owner of lot nine um does not or all reduces to consent to the stopping um then council would withdraw mm. from it have they been asked? Yeah. And their response? Uh, she's no longer taking email. Um, or no longer trying, I would suggest. I have had discussions with her and I have suggested to her how there could be some benefits in it. And it is her right as um, the adjacent property owner and it is her right funded as well. Understand. So um, it has implications for the, any adjacent owner when these happen. Because, I mean, so we've got us potentially approving something here and then all of a sudden it turns to well, crap. Well, you're already today, you're not approving. And it is subject to the so even if council um, agreed to the process, it is all subject to um, again against the chief executive to do all that's necessary to undertake the road stopping, and then that would be at that point all the these dotted eyes crossed in terms of the adjacent landowner approval. So my question is, why wouldn't you want to? take the smaller option of land to fix the problem that's going to fix the problem that's not necessarily going to have this big adverse effect on the neighbour and it's going to solve the issue. It's going to legalise it. So I understand the applicants don't have an appetite to purchase a small area of land that they would like to increase the whole of their rate Can we confirm that? Is it possible so that we can go yes, yeah, so strictly mm. not able to address and mm. less so, I mean, I'd just like to know if the applicants are happy with potentially a 46 square metre as opposed to a 250 square metre. Yes. Have you got any information? It's my understanding that. Well, Okay, so quite prepared for the applicants to respond to your question, Mark, but only that question. Okay, so my question is for the chair, would the applicants be comfortable with um, only stopping 46 square metres? No. 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 And really, no. we've still got no. people. Because when Bob Fox was there. And no, excuse me. I'm, you were allowed to yeah. answer sort of the specific question. Then we have to point out why. You don't need to point out why. I, I can't understand why this house this hasn't got an existing use. Right? I mean, it's been here since 1760 or 1870 or something. And, and, and this just seems to be a whole lot of. So this is not. This problem. seems to be a huge amount of expense. <laughs> But for a road that is very rarely used in Roxburgh, I mean, there's not a lot of traffic on that road at Roxburgh, um, and and it could be easily resolved under under existing use rights. So I think they should get it for a dollar and and use the existing use rights that that cottage has got. So if I was to answer that, um, there are no existing use rights when you occupy um, or you encroach on someone else's property. Mm -hmm. um, you cannot obtain those. And can I just say that this is actually very similar to uh, stopping. Um, that also came um, to see that community board for Oven Hill. And in this instance, property at 52 Oven Hill wanted to either, and I can't remember whether it was they knocked the cottage down or wanted to undertake significant um, renovations. And Oven Hill Road, the start of it um, in particular, had a 60 metre wide roading corridor. And in that instance, when the building inspector went to look at what they were doing, I understand it. Um, recall to my memory is when he went there, he said, I think he might be encroaching onto the legal road, and it was then determined that the cottage did in fact encroach. And a stopping was performed, and a um, portion of the road was stopped, um, effectively at double the size of the property. And then the, um, um, they paid for their land and paid all the costs associated with it, which is um, exactly what um, the policy states. And those people have since um, have heavily finished the renovations um, and have long since moved on. It's a uh, bit older than it's still measure. Mm, I, I still think okay, it's. Me, um, I just think that we could approve that, this or recommend it, as you say, um, but 
There's still going to be a massive issue with the neighbour, clearly. Mm, yes, that is actually at the It's not our issue. Right. What, uh, the application goes. Um, so, well, I guess if we get to stage one, then that's, that's up to stage one. Though, and the applicants can deal with the second stage. The actual recommendation is that how we believe it should be treated. Mm -hmm. Um, it then goes into the process and through due process, mm. the applicants will have to um, reach agreement with okay. the um, neighbouring party. All right. So my other question is, um, there's some suggestion here that there's a concern if, if we did uh, approve it for a, um, a lower value than the, than the registered valuation uh, of the uh, valuation of APL, it might create some precedent for the future. Um, is that really a problem, or is it something that you know you deal with on a case by case basis? Um, you know, because every case is different, and you just brought up another case and say, "Well, this is the circumstances with that case, and that's how that was dealt with." Here we've got, you know, something of similar nature but different facts. You know, but I, I don't see how. Well, I, I can't see that this specifically was say, "Oh, well, you." You did it for these people, therefore you've got to do it for the next hundred that come along as well. You know, that's so I guess if you were looking at it from a perspective of treating every case equally, um, as with the Oven Hill Road, which the facts of the, the underlying facts are identical to this, um, absolutely identical, um, that I would suggest that if the land was valued at, let's say the land has been valued at $100,000. Now that is worked out based on looking at the um, applicant's property as it is today and the value of that property, and then what the value does is looks at it as if that land was already included in their title and valued it. So if, for example, that land had come back with a value of $100,000, and um, then you say that you can have it for $1, are you then going to compensate the rest of the ratepayers whose land has not increased by $100,000 in value by not giving them anything? Um, or do you mm. go into um, have them pay for it, which aligns with council policy and um, with the public mm. research and all of those matters? Because that's effectively what you're saying. We can afford to give them something if we think that that's fair, but is that actually fair when you consider it in the green scheme of things? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to also sort of look at the loss to the Council, if we did approve it for a low value, and the gain to the applicants. And I don't know that doing this is really going to make any difference to the value of the applicant's property, except that they can actually do something with it. It's not going to be a win for all for them. So the value it's not of to increase the value. Yes. There is, there's a prescriptive process, yeah, yeah, and sure, there is sure. a methodology behind yeah. that. Yeah. And what it is saying is that um, after that, the, after that, um, if it was successful and it were amalgamated, yeah. their property would increase in value by $25,000. In total. In total. Good. Really? So, so, have we got any um, more questions? I'm yes. still to, I'm conscious of the fact that we've got five options in place to consider. Why can't council um, put an assessment you know, through that property in favour of the, of the land owners and then when the property is sold, um, then sort out your title and your encroachment. So the easements are for um, utility network operators who cannot put an yeah. easement for a structure that has been um, built over road, a uh, legal road. Things incredibly difficult. It's not very varying on the normal process. It's a very normal process. This is not a regular, and um, we've got um, many on the go, which are exactly the same. I think if we look at the um, options that we have in front of us, it will sort of narrow the. Oh, okay. Okay, so the advice says that it would be better to look at um, the recommendations that have been made in the report for um, an item 5.1. What page do you want? Sorry, which is page 14. 
report or yeah, the recommendations of the report. Oh, okay. Yeah. Page okay. Yeah. Page 14. So the purpose of the report is to consider an application for stock and unformed section of Brankstone Street to legalise an historic encroachment in accordance with the provisions of the Public, Public Works Act 1981. The recommendations are that the Tibet Valley Community Board receives the report and accepts a level of significance. B to recommend to Council to improve the approval. Uh, proposal to stop the unformed road of Brankstone Street, a portion of Brankstone Street identified as section one in figure five, being approximately 68 metres, subject to the applicants paying all costs associated with the stock, and including purchase of the land evaluation. The applicants obtaining the consent of the owner of lot one DP7225, the land being amalgamated with record title um, OT400 bar 197, lot DP4138, the stocking being approved by the Minister of Lands and the final survey being approved by the Chief Executive Officer. And C authorises the Chief Executive Officer to do all that is necessary to give effect to the resolution. So this means that um, we need, if we uh, take a vote and, rec and follow the recommendation, um, then we can pr proceed to uh, discuss the rest of the options, or is it? Um, yeah, so if the motion's lost, yeah. so if, if it was moved and seconded and the motion was lost, then um, you could or another motion um, okay. in amongst those options you want to see. So I move that we I'm voting proposing a vote for the option. Yes. So it was who puts the motion for? If you want to move the motion, you can do that. You can ask for a seconder. You yeah. can ask for a seconder. Um, if there's no more discussion, then you can vote. If yeah. the vote's lost, then you can um, uh, look for other um, okay. uh, motions. Yeah. <clears throat> from within the options. Okay. So I'll put the motion forward that we um, accept the accept the report in the level of significance. And um, may I suggest, can you take A separately, and then the report can be received? Oh, you know, okay. And then perhaps look at B and C. Oh, okay. Then if um, those are lost, then you can look at other. Right, okay. So I put the motion forward that we receive the report and accept the level of significance. I'll move that. I'll take that. Yeah. Um, all those in favour say aye. Aye. And those against? So I can be um, to recommend to council to approve the proposal. I put the motion forward that we follow the recommendation and recommendation B. Which is option one. Which is to that is option one. That is option yeah. one. Yeah. 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 So, can I just want to move that, please? You can move it. Like it. Right, I'll, I'll move that then, and I need a second to. So, is that moderation? So, it's there for us. Um, There's no one seconding it. I'll second it for the purpose of getting a vote. Okay. Thank you. All those in favour of um, pursuing the recommendation as an item B say aye. Aye. Well, yep. And against? Say no. 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 So it's lost. So, yeah, no. <laughs> okay. So, given that, we will. 
review the options that we have in front of us. The option one is obviously not um, the favoured option. Thank you, Ian, for all the options. Uh, uh, 24. 24. 24. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess what you could ask is if option that we have with the yeah. the, the, the easiest way to manage this, given that we've got five options and um, I'll start with Sally. Have you got a preferred option? Sally? Option C. Option C. Three. 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 <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, just say three. Well, I think <laughs> option one. Mm -hmm. Both for option one. Have you got a, a second preferred option? Where? Are you. Uh, who are you talking to? Well, it was Russell. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh. Okay. I, 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 if I was. You talk to her. Okay. I, I would. Um, I think these people have been through a lot, and uh, not that that should really weigh too much on it, but it does weigh a bit to me. I, 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 I think I'd like to put this to bed, and I would, I would suggest. The whole the whole lot for the six thousand, which isn't one of the options, unfortunately. Rather than the forty six, I see I see the rest that that extra little bit of land at the top is um, what you said is. So what does that mean? You're not selecting any of those options. Well, that's that that's right. But if, if someone so if someone if so, deviate from. Oh, okay. but, yeah. 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 So, so that can be done. <clears throat> We're just going to word the motion. So are you saying in that motion it's option three, but instead of six thousand and twenty-five or GFD it's six thousand either? Is that the same? Uh it's it's actually option it's option. option it's option, option two, one. option right. option one's gone. Yeah, I'm, sure yeah, I'm saying option two for six thousand and twenty-five. So, if I may suggest, if you wanted to move that, mate, the easiest thing would be to go to the recommendation on page fourteen, and instead of saying purchasing the land at valuation, say purchase the land at six thousand and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, because everything else, like everything else, covered that right. way. and it would probably be the least confusing. I'm okay, not, I'm not recommending that. I'm just no, saying it's the clearer way to do it. This, that would be my position. I don't know if we can get this. Yep, that would be my position. So, but yeah, if, if you go up to the recommendations. And the reason for that is that if it was just for a dollar, it would create huge precedent. And, 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 and if it's, you know, we've gone that way, we said, OK, there's been a measured consideration here. We've talked about it. And it gives them some sort of subjectivity to it rather than objectivity. And in the future, then there it doesn't create it. You know, they got it for a dollar there, everyone else should get it for a dollar. So, where are you getting your value from? That's yeah, the fact um, that well, well, we had it. Okay. You know, good that, question. That, good that, question. That, yeah. Lots of different saying that in one bowl. That's not that, that's not putting an appropriate value on anything. Yeah, yes, yeah, a subjective it's a subjective valuation. Right. It's a subjective valuation. We're talking about option two. Option yeah. two. Option two for six thousand. I'm saying the whole lot for six thousand. I'm going to option two with the whole lot for a dollar because uh, but hang on. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. So there's been a motion for yeah. yeah. So have you? No, I've got. Um, have, you, have you put the motion forward? Well, I will. Yeah, I would. I would. So um, whatever the words are, I'd like to see option two for six thousand. I'd like to put that on the table. Yeah, Seek a second for that. Okay, so um, I'm just writing up the. Um, so it's exactly the same as the original recommendation, but. Including purchase of the land at six thousand six thousand and twenty-five dollars, including GST if required. 
the correct one. Yeah, so, so option one. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, sure. Exactly okay, so the same as option one. Yeah, I just need yeah. to Six thousand instead of this. Yep. So, um, Mark's foot has come up with something else. He's putting that forward. Or if he can find a seconder. The Mark's sort of in motion. Yeah, so I'm the Mark's put motion forward. We're seeking a seconder for it. Yeah. Have we got a second? No. Uh, no. Okay. So no, therefore, we lost the last of the seconder. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. Let's just think about what we're what we're actually looking to achieve here. Is that okay. yeah. yeah. So I'd like to take out um, a couple of minutes of adjournment so I can just speak to the board uh, about what we're looking to achieve here. Yes. And okay. I adjourn this meeting for around four or ten minutes and we'll until three PM. Okay, three PM.
Okay, thank you. With it. Um, I'll just read. I suppose it's really open this meeting. Um, following discussions during the adjournment, I'd like to yeah. put a motion forward that we pursue option two. Second that. Thank you, Jill. I'm just um, making sure that's everything that was before, except it's now not. No, no, just action two. Is oh, option two. Oh, just option two. Option two becomes a recommendation B. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I've got to get C in there. So that I've, I've moved the, rec the recommendation B um, contains option two. Yeah. Okay. I've moved it and Joe has seconded it. Yes. Yeah. 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 So um all those all those in favour of um the recommendation. This is B. 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 Okay. That's right. That's how often do. Oh, option two becomes a recommendation. Yeah. Option two becomes a recommendation. B. Um, all those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? No. So, no. no. And this option. I've got two and two. Like You're allowed to move. You're allowed to move. And my vote. Well, you've moved it, so I'm supporting options. Would you like votes recorded? Mm -hmm. Against. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Russ, would you like to be reported against? Yeah, object. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. Carried. Yeah. This is the end. Mm-hmm. Um. And I move the motion that uh, item C, which is authorised in the Chief Executive to do all that is necessary to give effect to the resolution. Um, those in favour say aye. Aye. Second it. Second it. Sorry. Yep, I'll second it. Okay, those in favour say aye. Aye. Carried. Thanks, Linda. Thank you. Thank you. So that now goes to the council for ratification. Uh, so it's not ratification. You've made a recommendation and they'll make the decision. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. okay, so this is where I put a conflict of interest. Mark, I'll ask you to place that in the chair for this. In the discussion of item 23.3, okay. uh, 23.2.3. Trying to get to the page. Have you got your run sheet there? It was on page 55. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Stay ready. Yeah, good. Good day. How are you? Kia ora. Yeah. Kia ora. So, um, so thank you. So we've got on the agenda is the uh, Rocks Marine Entertainment Centre maintenance project, and we're going to consider a uh, change to the maintenance program. Um, so, um, would you like to speak to it? Yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. Everyone. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Christina Martin. Um, I am a property facilities officer for the Vincent and Cheviot Valley, and one of the properties in my portfolio is the Rock Street Entertainment Centre. Um, it's been quite a topic for a number of years around the Rock Street Entertainment Centre being the Civil Defence Centre, and I can now confirm since writing this report that Derek Shaw, our emergency management officer, has signed a MOU. Sorry. Yay. <laughs> we just put my desk in the match. That, um, what that means is our civil defence centre will now be down at the Rockstra School Hall. That in turn means that our Rockstra Entertainment Centre no longer needs to be the ward's civil defence centre, so we don't need to strengthen it now up to 67% um, IL force so and imported level 4 because it was going to be a civil defence centre. So that's fantastic. 
Um, so that's one. However, I am coming to you all um, to request that I actually still use that budget, but for something else. Um, so you'll see um, that I have recommended here that I, we've had a start of our program maintenance, and we've had a few leaks at the centre. So we actually got this one something to go across. Rather than doing Patrick News all the time, let's go across and just see how much life is left in this group and be a bit more proactive. So this report really is about being more proactive in our maintenance of this building. And what I'm recommending here is the initial of 61, uh, budget of 61k um, as put in year one of the long term plan, um, and then 1500 from um, year on in to do some maintenance work around rust prevention and things like that. I'm also asking for um, the reallocation of some of the capital budget that's no longer required to actually make um, the building um, strengthen to a civil defence centre level and redirect that to um, a repair, a full replacement of the south wall. So that's the WSP report option three, who was an engineer that we got to have a look at it. Um, it gives the longest longevity of the repair. There was other options there, but when you actually look at it, it will still mean that there is joints, etc., in there, which could still lead to water um, ingress and above the windows as well. So by replacing all of that, you're giving your best bang for buck, really. And finally, I'm asking for um, reallocation of some of the operational budget and to put that towards the conservation plan because this building is actually quite significant to the area. And I think it would be really great to get that recorded down. Um, and that will also, there's an advantage because we're already getting the engineers there to look over the whole building. They can do that too and tag team them together. Um, any questions? Thank you. Um, Assume that everyone's read the yep. report. I've read the report and thank you very much. It was uh, quite uh, detailed and specific, and uh, I understand it. Any questions for Sal? No, I probably understand it. Russell, any questions? No. no? Yeah, we, um, you got to get into where are the engineers coming from. Um, so the engineers are WSP, um, they've got offices throughout the area, including Alexandra as well. If we had local people to have a look, of course, you know, you look, at, you look at things like people that have got local knowledge about where the weather comes from, you know, bits and pieces, if we have local people look at what needs to be done. So WSP, um, there's a number of engineers that we have used over the years for our um, engineering work um, in terms of procurement this doesn't reach a level where we go out and look at yeah. things like that so it's a few recommendations yeah yeah and it's you know and once a company gets to know the building they hold all those records and things like that but it's it is yeah. a very on with them also personally i have dealt with a few at wsp are fantastic they give great service they ring me before i reach them and i think with an update yeah uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> totally understand. And they are, there's, there's like outside of people that are pulling in and intonating this with you. Yeah, you are. So the way I see it, that um, we had some funds allocated to do some certain work, which was statutory work and not necessarily maintenance. So now we've, uh, luckily, we don't have to do that. We've now got the option. So if we didn't approve this now, when would this work be done? Well, I'd have to put it forward to the long term plan. Um, so then consider it through through that avenue. It needs it needs to be done. So that would be the next course of action would be to put that work through the long term plan. Are we talking the next year, eighteen months, two yeah, years? Yeah. So you're currently just about heading into the last year of the. No, sorry, the work. Route. The work. When would the, when would the, these works be necessary if we didn't approve them now? Well, if you look at the with the photograph, there's a good photograph there. Yeah. Page fifty nine. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Why would we? Why would we not approve? Like, why would we not do the work? Oh, I'm not suggesting we wouldn't. Right. I'm just asking the question. Right. When, you know, is there something that you, that you could fix that and nothing else, and then we've got three different Beyond things. just a temporary repair. Yeah. Yeah. And I was hoping that I could dovetail, which all my ducks aligned, that we yeah. wouldn't have to do the earthquake treatment work and this as well. Mm. So, um, I'm and. Personally, I'm quite pleased to be bringing it to you. So, so you're saying that if, if we if we were doing the earthquake strength, then it's likely that in a year's time you'd be coming with this. I would have been well. coming. I would have been coming with this anyway. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Needs to be done. Okay. Yeah. The roof, I can delay. Yeah. We can delay. We've got, um, but this work, it needs to just track on okay. just to get done. Perhaps. And can we redo the sign on the top of the building? It's got great big brown shit sign. It's terrible. Okay. Maybe you can sneak that in. Um, okay. Any other comments? Otherwise, we will put um, uh, the motion there. Move it. We accept all of those recommendations. Is that mm -hmm. what we do? Can, can, I, can I say something first? Can I ask a question? Yes. Because it is a heritage building, we're giving you money for many of the heritage trust body as New Zealand's longest running consumers, but you theatre. So at the moment, it's got no New Zealand heritage status. It hasn't. No. That's why I'm getting the conservation plan. So then we ask to go down there. Oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, we want to. Okay. Any, does anyone else have any questions for me? For your attention, to you said that um, you should allocate that capital money um, for a capital project, but uh, so it's actually probably more of a reserve and which can consider what we can do. So, there is something that you must need to be aware of. It's something that we need to take stock of and work through within the modern financial year of how the RTP um, because we don't ultimately want those accounts to be certainly going to be out with matching the hundreds of every two months. So, this money comes out of the reserves. And I note further on later that our reserves are going to drop from 1.4 million down to 300,000 based on various issues. This being one of them. That's the one. Yeah. That's on noted on page 63. Mm. But I mean, the issue is the work's going to need to be done either mm. this year or next year. Okay, there's no other questions. I'll, um, I'll seek a uh, Someone to move that uh, we accept the recommendation it's A, B, C, D, and E. With that, thank you. Seconder, thank you, Jill. I'm going to vote on it now, Russell. Yeah. yeah. All those in favour? Aye. 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 So, mm -hmm. thank you cool. very much. Thank you. Well done. Good job. Oh, I, I didn't realise you were there. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to just sit there. You did very well. Like you didn't mention your name. <laughs> One question I was going to ask about, I should have asked, is how much could this all blow out? Because they're talking about the possibility of that species. Mm. 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 Yeah, I'm hoping. Big boots to fill on them, please. That other one here. So Susan looks like you're up and then playing the budget things in the charge to send the schedule. Okay. I'll take the report as being read. Um, we are facing a 10.4% increase district wide. Um, and essentially a lot of that is um, inflationary factors such as insurance premiums and things like that. And unfortunately that's not going to go away and going to hold this way through um, what the district, what the Chile Valley though, is actually a, a decrease from um, the previous year. Now, um, to put that in context, every $5.3,000 is 1% on the rates. And 5, 5, 5, on your rates. Right. At a war basis, you have 
they just bounce out. That's right. So we know we've got to so just just to get the, the big picture, the, the council's overall revenue is from 50, 60, 70 million. And of that, a large portion is spent or a portion of that spent in this valley. And we've got and of that 560,000 is specifically tagged to this district. So we're looking at the five the five hundred and sixty a thousand, not the remaining fifty million. Yeah, exactly right. And yeah. and then Mary up with the delegations that you've got. So the delegations that the board and each of the wards has is around your um, recreation and culture and your community facilities. It's the expenditure that can be specifically easily tagged to this district. Sure. So it's the expenditure that you as a board have delegation for. So you, so you have delegation for your parks contract, you have delegation for your community buildings, like so the entertainment centre, um, that oh. sort of thing. Right. So the, the rates that are shown in there of, of equivalent 568,000, that is the accumulation of what ratepayers would see on their ward based rates lines. So we've got some general rates and we've got some. CRDC tourism rates, and there's some that are specific to Teviot Valley Ward. Those 261 people would add up to 560,000. Yeah. Okay, got it. So, and what they will see is a promotion rate, a recreation and culture yeah. rate. Yeah. So they'll see those rates for yeah. services charge, oh. um, but they'll also see um, water, water connection, and um, they'll see wastewater and um, a general road which includes yeah. the road of the great road, etc. So the, the detail of your rates are gone. I don't know if you've ever turned it over. Yeah. It's actually sure. quite detailed. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, the increases, or in your case, the decreases, um, are not similar to what I've talked to you about um, in pre-meetings over the last couple of times that I've come. Um, essentially, elect member remuneration is gone. The valuation of buildings is gone, which means if you were rate funding that um, depreciation, then that's gone. But the thing that has actually dropped your award rate this time around is we've moved away from um, depreciation on passive park spaces. So that's actually saves the money in, in the bill, which is the reason that you've got a slight decrease in your rates for this coming year. Um, the only other major thing that I was all to draw your attention to is the reserves table that is part of Donna's report and sort of Probably. Um, 110, I believe. So just, I just draw your attention to that. It's, you have got some deficits in some areas that we would want to have a good look at through the financial strategy as part of the long term plan and as to whether we can write those deficit accounts over a period of time. We wouldn't do it. One year, but um, we need to align our capital expenditure with funding just as much as we need to align our operational um, expenditure with funding. So we just need to consider that. So, what are your recommendations on that? So, as far as the reserves are concerned, we will look at that through the RTP properties. Um, and my recommendation. Well, as taper is that um, you agree to accept the Tibet Valley Ward budgets and recommend those to the council to be included in the plan as of now. Okay. The, the, we're talking about reserves. The, can you tell me how the transfers and the Tibet? Development fund at the bottom, 7122, 
that, how does that money come in? Is that is that from rating? Oh. No, the reserves contribution is in um, there is development. Oh, right. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. So there have been a lot. <laughs> right. So the the um so those negative um, closing balances there. The is, stuff. Yeah. yeah, is that a timing issue or is that just never going to come right? I mean, so it means we've over, we've, the, the, the entertainment centre was. So, so there wasn't an aligned funding stream. Oh, I see. So it's different to a normal business, you've got to kind of match cash with cash, yeah. um, which is making a difference in local government. Mm -hmm. um, so so basically there hasn't been a funding stream, but there has been the capital expenditure going out. And that's what I'm talking about. Through the LTP, we will look at how we can write some of those deficit accounts over time. So there's two, two amounts with the in the general reserves, the 250,000 out, and in the Roxbury, oh, well, they're Are those? Those are the grants. Th so there's two grants. In, for five hundred thousand. For the for, So that's where those two figures they add up yeah. to five. And that's for for the club. That's good, isn't it, Sal? Yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. Got to get our money from somewhere, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Three million dollar project. Yeah. Fantastic. That's. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Some, I think it's a bit quite honest. Like, like really, the community board needs to get together and have a. Yeah, I've had a deep look at the, the, with the green waste. Um, I mean, my Miller's flat people, they get it for free at the moment, open seven days, 24 hours a day, and then there's a new rate going to come in and it's going to start charging them $15 a cubic metre, and it's not open very often. You know, and I'm going to get some heat on that, sure. Okay. It's open about three and a half, three and a half afternoons a week, and it's gone from free, and you've got, now you've got to drive there. And it's and it's fifteen dollars a if it meters only a little trailer, not even. But all the people are going to get a bin that they can put their green waste in. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Those that don't have the bin service, they need to be equity in that charging. So if they opt out in those areas that can opt out of having a bin service, if they take it straight to the transfer station, they need to be charged for it just the same way as that you'll be paying through it through the organic bin. Um, and this is a question that's been raised with every community board that I've been to so far. Unfortunately, QP has just said, mm -hmm. um, but we will be um, taking a paper to council just to make sure that we get the equity right through those um, the rating um, unit for waste as well as the transfer sections so that we make sure it's because of all the other whether you've got the bins or you haven't got the bins. So you get charged no matter what, is that what you're saying? There's no opt out yeah. option. No, not from paying for disposing of your green waste yeah. because it will cost us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the other thing is with the green waste bin, you're actually legally going to have more cubic metres of green waste that you're going to be able to get rid of now in your bin than what you were legally able to take to the mill of the flat. Yeah. Okay. No, just looking for answers. I'm yeah. looking for answers. I'm going to get hit. Yeah, yeah so that, that, that's it. Um... The other thing through the chair, Mark, because I have been hit too, yeah. and it's pretty easy. Mills flat folk had a perk that virtually mm. nobody else had, yeah. and it's gone. And the reason isn't because of the green bins. It's easy, easy to confuse it. The resource consent, I understand, is up, and yeah. you weren't going to get it again. So, right. so the green bins have actually come along at a perfect yeah. time to solve yeah. the problem mm. because they were going to have to drive yeah. to Roxburgh. Mm. So it's, yeah. yeah. So previously at this table, it's been suggested. Well, I know that the the um, the gold mine was suggesting that they were going to put an application in to run the green waste. Yeah. yeah. And I just wonder if that's if that if you there's been any progress on that. That was last year. Yeah, that was last The gold mine said that they were going to run the green waste for free for the community. I, I can that. remember that was uh, table matter at meeting and yeah. we haven't heard any more. Can, can I just check who tabled that? How did that? Because that's all news to me and I'd be very surprised. 
that come that up was with suggested yeah. from by Mark yeah. that, that that was going to happen. Right. So it wasn't I tabled by a staff member. No, no, it no. was tabled that somebody's heard something that someone might have said about something. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, yeah, so. and, and, uh, and then um, uh, <laughs> Louise was aware of it. Actually yeah. coming, and she said, "Well, we'll look at it when it comes." So maybe it hasn't come. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. It hasn't come. Hasn't come. Okay. Second question, Miller's flat pool. The good news is that you put it going from twenty thousand dollars up to thirty-seven thousand dollars support. Um, and got the line number for that. it's probably the additional maintenance around the pool Okay. Okay. So a lot of the um. The budgets that have got in the report have not altered since the LTP, unless there's an inflationary pressure in there. So we're trying to hold it to what was agreed. So the works programs, the level of service for your parts reserves, the level of service for the community facilities, it's it's generally the same as what was in the LTP. It's just um, those known factors that we've got to account for. Okay. You will. See in more detail as we go through this next LTP um, those items that you've got uh, delegations for. Um, there will be some discussion about whether you want to change the level of service, which means do you, you know, can you save some money or do you um, increase the level of service? And, and, I mean, I know that. I think David will have a conversation with you outside of this just about the green space um, contract and where that's going. So those are things that we will make decisions across through the LTP process, which will transpire into what's in your LTP budgets and the form of contract works, um, parks works, that sort of thing. Good note here. Somehow, account 7211, 7211, it says elected members 100,000. I'm just trying to find the account where it is. It's um, page 100 at the bottom. Yes, so the remuneration authority is, they um, instigate what your remuneration is and yeah. they increase that. So, how does it get to 100,000? Oh, we're not allowed to have that. <laughs> that's what they said. No, but, so that's in total for your board. For mm. the board. But, yes, it has it. Get into a room. Page 110, you say so. 110. 100. Yeah. Sorry, I sort of took notes as I was going through the whole thing. Seven through 11. Yeah. So it's a hundred thousand. So how does that make up? Don't get a hundred thousand. Mm. So it's how do you get a hundred thousand. How does that? Yeah. So yeah. I'm not sure. Don't think it's an English specific cost. Um. Why well, I'm not sure. That, is it per? Is it so many meetings in the calculation, or is it so much? Our, our individual remuneration is set by. It is. Yeah. And the, slits, <laughs> the total of these people around the table here is. Might be over fifteen thousand. No, no, this is an, no, this is annual. Thing. This is annual. Well, where are you getting that number from, Claire? Um, On page 100 at the bottom, ward services rate number 7 to 11, elected members, Teviot Valley. Page 100. And yeah. So you're going up from 95,000. There's a group that's what you get paid now. Yeah, but so that's my question. Who, who makes up that group? Not us. Not us five. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 we, we get we get eighteen. Is that also contribution to council elected members representing the record? So the mayor, who can only be councillor. Okay, right. If you want to move on to the next one, I'll just check the act and find out what the number is in the act. Um, well, we get we get eighteen off between us. Why are us sitting here? Yeah, but, yeah, but, 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 but
So this one, one here. For us. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. So this. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Um. So John to clarify there. It actually includes really your wider um services. So it's running with the meetings, the papering, oh, cool. yeah. um, travel for conferences and yeah. planning that you do. Um. So it's all all of the running of governance for our community board, including your remuneration. So it's not equitably strong. Because we get paid three and a half thousand each or something. The longest double because he's, he's a soft dog. So that's that's about twenty grand between us. And I, I don't know how twenty becomes a hundred. I mean, I'm just asking. I mean, obviously, there's some other things in there. But yeah, how many conferences do you go on? Your training days. No. I mean, there is something I was going to, but I mean, that's not, I mean, no. that, that, that's not going to be eighty thousand dollars of traveling from, is it? We can drill into that a little bit. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, give you an update. But you'd be surprised. Okay, maybe we will be next meeting. Yeah. Thank you. We do make contributions to running council now too, don't we? Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. does that come out of the last budget? Thirty and a half. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at uh, sorry, I'm just looking at the remuneration here. Uh, the remuneration authority to so yeah. uh, uh, three five five four. Yeah. And then the that's right. So what? It's 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 so you get stuff. So if you multiply yeah. three five five four times six, that's what we get. It's going in there as well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's cancelled. Yeah. 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 Take up half. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. We'll come back with something explaining that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I've got. A question around um, if we go to page 99. This is fundamental accounting. I might have missed something here. All, all the um, items listed in that table bar depreciation of cash. Page 99. Yeah. So if you take your non-cash um, value out of your operating surplus and deficit, you end up with surplus in cash of one hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars. Is that real cash, or is that um, is that just Uh, because you take it when when you look at your expenses and you've got a non cash item in there of depreciation, do we end up with a cash surplus as, a, as opposed to a pre deficit? Um, so, this is where things are different in local government than in normal business. Yeah. Because essentially, what we've got to do in local government is that we actually have to draw the cash in that depreciation bucket. So that we've got that sitting there to replace the asset in time, because our big issue in local government is about intergenerational equity. Okay, so so we actually for a lot of our assets are rate funding, so we're drawing in cash yeah. for depreciation. So it's effectively an air world. It's not necessarily. It's not a long cash on. That means that we've got an in, in award uh, reserves suddenly. We've got a depreciation bucket. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, in theory. But then when you go to your reserve table. Yeah, it's not there. Well, you have got general re reserves. Um, so. That will include some depreciation, but if you look at, say, the Roxbury Entertainment Centre, we've obviously spent more than we've got in reserve for capital expenditure, mm -hmm. and quite often that um, to do with the lifetime of the asset mm -hmm. and where, mm -hmm. as community board or as council, you made the decision to fund that depreciation. So by that I mean um, it's been an evolution. So yeah. we started depreciating 
um, water and wastewater aspects and then um, started, you know, community facilities. And we now rebuild a lot of it um, by a um, uh, frequent cycle so that we're making sure we've got up-to-date valuations. Um, and therefore, we are um, looking at the rate take needed for depreciation on the updated valuation. So we're getting a lot better at that in local government, but because that's taken some time to get there, you don't necessarily have the pot. Mm. But we want to build up the pot so that we don't get into the same situation as we're in now, where previous generations have had the use of the assets and haven't necessarily paid for the assets. Mm. So now we've got um, a first that we've got a water main upgrade happening in the Ulster P, is that correct? Uh, somewhere uh, along yeah. the line. Yeah. So that was funded out of where? That will be funded out of partly probably depreciation. Yeah. Could be part out of some development contributions because we will have had growth depending on um, how much of an upgrade it is. Um, so it will be a combination. So who is replacing an existing? Not new. So um, I'd have to go back and look at the mm. funding stream. Where is this one? Oh, basically, some of that will come from a depreciation pot mm. sitting in council. Mm. Because when you look at how much it takes to lift the rates one to see, it was only five thousand bucks uh, at a ward level. It's at the yeah. And uh, we're sitting here trying to control the rate impost on our rate card. It's it's. When you look at the depreciation, it is so discretionary. You know what I'm saying? It's sort of like it, because it is related to value. The value is is discretionary. It's got so, a lot of subjectivity in it. Um, yeah. They are valued by um, which is value. Um, there is a process that we have to go through when we build at New Zealand. Um, and I guess this is one of the big it's one of the big things around three waters. Is, um, have they put off those upgrades? Have they not appreciated the rate funding for those upgrades? And, um, and that's all what I'm talking about with the financial strategy is that um, we've got to make sure that if you've got strategic investments, they go to strategic assets. If you've got something like the Roxford Entertainment Centre, we don't want it to go into disrepair. However, we've got to come up with a way of funding it, and it's a little likely that's going to be somehow through rates, um, so that we can keep that maintenance and keep the program going for it. So identifying those things and making sure that we have the financial strategy going forward. Mm. OK. Uh, Good clarification. As I said, we're in game. Where does the uh, costs associated with Grover's Hill come in? Where are they? Where are you, the costs associated with the Grover's Hill um, reforestation or deforestation project. I couldn't see what. I looked at reserves, I can't see anything there. Um, That's in property. Right. So it's in a fund, and most of that will be expended before the end of this financial year. Oh, okay. And it'll be residual carry forward until what we don't spend. Yeah. Reserve funds. So that won't. So so it doesn't show in our in our monthly report for the budget. Um. So the um Gordon told us at the beginning permanently. And the reserves take into as a box. Right. Mm -hmm. On page 
Um, for annual building purposes, but this is the first time in a very long time. Sorry. So you said it's in so 7341 Forestry Roxburgh has got nothing there. Oh, there's no intention to break the court, so therefore there is no mm. race for the technical service. Right. Mm. Okay. Mm. So the, the project to date of, of, of cutting down the trees and selling them, where would we be able to see that? Yeah. It just happened during this financial year. Yeah. Where, General reserves. So it's a reserve. Seven triple one. What page? Page one hundred and ten. Seven triple one. You get four services. Right. Oh, okay. Now, to be part of that, um, fifty-three thousand. Yeah. Because you're getting, you've found them and you're getting some retracting right. code. Okay. So I imagine that some of that 53,000 has got to do with um, the return on those trees. It's not specific. Yeah, okay. Oh. There's a little concern. Yes. Yeah. So it's in the best part. Yeah. Yes. For some of the town of the trees will be included in the land. Yeah. So we have small support from coming through into the debt financial year. Yeah. And then for the next financial year, possibly this financial year, I'm not sure, we'll need to be able to read the plan that we can all move through that year. Okay. No, I What's that new stock for Vargas? How old? Where's it gone? Sorry, what's that? What's happened to the, the wood that was taken off road is all going to be taken off road. So it's well, a waste of sand. Yeah, a lot of it. So a lot, a lot of company came and sold it. We're not sure. I think for lots or yeah. We've got a hundred. So what do you get? One hundred and twenty thousand. Yeah, one hundred twenty thousand cash. Is there school history? Well, I think we'll just um, yeah. refocus ourselves on the. Matter at hand. Um, wow. okay. So if you go back to was it sixty seven? Sixty seven. Right. So the recommendations are that um, A, B, and C there that you should get me agreed. So I'll move that we um, accept those recommendations. I'll second it. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those against? Carry. Thank you for that good work. Okay. Thank you, Susan. Um, and if I can just add, subsequent to that, if there are any questions that you <laughs> have, you have to some of those questions around the finance as well, and okay. file them through to me, and mm -hmm. I can catch up with Susan and finance them and bring those back. Okay. Item 23.2.5 um, on page 106. Well, this is the same question here, but remember remuneration down there. It's 9,000 for the farm. Oh. We've got Donna. Oh, yeah, to talk oh sorry. Talk yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right up, go. <laughs> Hi, um, so for all of you that don't know me, this is my first time actually to the PWS community. Um, my name is Donna McEwen. I am the Systems and Corporate Accountant at the Council. 
And today I'm here to take you through the three focus casino for the two financials. So I take the paper as being read for the first six months ending the 31st of December 2022. There was an unfavorable operating variance of $494,000 against the revised budget. Um, revenue has a favorable variance of 13000 and expenditure has an unfavorable variance of 507000 This is mainly due to the capital contribution made towards the Roxburgh Community Pool upgrade, where the budget sat in the last financial year. Um, and then the rates are also higher at the moment due to the timing of the budget, and this should smooth out towards the end of the financial year. For capital expenditure, there is a favorable variance of $10,000. Um, the King George Playground equipment project has been delayed due to the availability of the contractor. Are there any questions? So where's the still about the delay of the project? Just due to the availability of the contractor. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what's going on the King George shop? I believe a ranger out of it. No, we were taking some of the slides. Um, I was placed there. Nice to get that place with the supply. Probably tense. Yeah, that'll put it out in the discussion. Mm. Yep. Mm. Um, so my question is the same as the one I had before about members' remuneration. So we've got 18,000 for the year plan, 9,000 for six months, so that's on track. Mm -hmm. But the previous question that I had regarding the plan for next year, it says that this year is 95,000 for the year and next year is going to be 100. And so. so there's a difference between the cost centre for elected members' remuneration and the line item in the financial report um, saying that members' remuneration, that is specifically for your actual remuneration, mm -hmm. whereas the cost centre covers your activity mm -hmm. as a board. Right. So we're going to find out next month where the 80,000, the, the remaining 80,000 goes. Yeah. And it will be a. Uh, I'm sure it'll be there. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're also getting the, the recommendations that we just received this report. Yeah. We'll move that that report be received. Can I have a second, please? Yep, yeah, I second it. Um, all those in favour the report being received, say aye. Aye. Those against, say no. Carried. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. He's in. I'd like to change 19. So, um, thank you, Lonnie. I think um, we thought it'd be good to come around the community boards and explain a little bit about where we're at with Plan Change 19. So um, we've been to all of them now, this is the, the fourth one that we've been to, just giving a bit of an update as to what the process is. Um, it's a fairly comprehensive plan change. It's the first time that we've looked at the residential chapter provisions since 1998, since the plan was drafted. So, um, so it's a fairly comprehensive change. It's a big shift away. The government um, has introduced in the last few years. Um, Council has chosen to approach the way that we plan for growth um, through development of spatial plans. We've got Dunn Cromwell and we've done Vincent, and now we've got Mr. Bumi Weber on um, Tibet Valley. So, the Plan Change 19, uh, the zoning in that reflects the outcome of the Cromwell and Vincent spatial plan. And for context, once we get through the Tibet Valley spatial plan, um, then we'll do some zone changes. The, the, the actual provisions that we're working through at the moment will then be able to apply for the whole district using consistent zoning typologies, medium density, that sort of thing. So, um, so 
Will you amend plan change 19 or will you make a plan change 22 to reflect? It'll probably be plan change 23 or 24, yeah. Okay, so yeah. it'll be a new one. Yeah. Yes, okay. yeah. So it'll just be about the zoning next time. So the, the plan change 19 is all of the objectives and the policies and the rules and all of that. So it's, it's the framework that we'll be working within. And within plan change um, 19, one of the biggest shifts is that we currently, on the operative plan, we've got I think 13 or 14 residential zones, all with slightly different sizes and, and things that apply to them through various plan changes, but it's been tweaking. So this is a comprehensive review and we're using the national planning standards terminology and types of, of um, lot sizes and things like that. But, um, so those of you that have been involved with the TV Valley Spatial Plan will be familiar with sort of medium density, low density, that large lot, that sort of thing, those sort of discussions we've been having. So the zonings are planned in that way. So once the spatial plan's done, the plan change 19 will be through its process. So it's about zoning, it becomes just a zoning so then another plan change. Um, so the plan, the plan changes I just briefly mentioned introduces um, some new zones. Um, we've got large lot, low density, and medium density. Um, and around the, particularly around Cromwell, we have a, a bit of variety in our large lot, and really that's around some of the unusual zones historically around Lake Coast, lots of North Burn and places like that, where they've got. Um, sort of four or six thousand square metres, that sort of stuff. So we've maintained <coughs> that development as it is. So there's just been a little bit of variance, but generally speaking, um, as proposed, um, medium density is 200 square metre sections. You can go up to three storeys in Alexandra and Bromwell, and two in Clive is proposed at this stage. Um, so that's just that kind of in and up type thing. So it's medium density. Mm -hmm. Uh, low density as proposed is 500 square metres minimum, which is a shift up from what we've currently got. And I think that's the one that, um, that, that that's that sort of, we're looking at that at the moment. And there has been submissions asking for it to be 400 and a bit lower. And we're looking at that in terms of preparing the recommendation report for the hearings panel, because um, looking through Alexandra and Cromwell, there's a lot of sections there that are in eight to nine hundred square metres. And if we say it's five hundred, then that development opportunity goes, and we don't want that. So we're looking at that at the moment. So is it so people can have this city? Yeah, yeah. So that provides for a level of info. And what we have noticed is um, certainly some of the new subdivisions that are coming through. There's a lot of sections in that four hundred square metres. It's kind of still low density. It's not the little tiny sort of um, medium density stuff, but it's still in that sort of, uh, there's a 98 lot subdivision on the corner uh, of Sunderland Street and Clyde, um, for example, and it's got quite a few in the sort of mid 400s that seem to be quite popular. So when we look at, so this is the sort of thing we're thinking about, while we said 500, there's a lot of submissions asking us to have another lot, so the panel will make a decision on what that might look like. So. So that's generally what it is. Four places like Mini Toto and TV Valley that haven't yet got a, a, a spatial plan as such. The, the residential resource areas we call at the moment has just been dropped into low density, which is kind of, it's kind of what we've got in the US. So can sort of, uh, you can go to, yeah, you can go to with the seven and a half metre height. Um, yeah, so it's just dropped into that. But out of the spatial plan, if we have an area which um, the plan that we'll probably talking to you a wee bit later about that, but the plan, the draft that we've got um, that's going to be going to council in the next few weeks um, uh, shows some medium density in, in around the um, centre of Roxburgh. So you've got medium at 200, low at 500, and what's the large lot? 3,000 is the fault. Um, we've been thinking about that um, and just in the context of some of the discussions that we had um, with the um, key stakeholder group that Paula and I came to last week down here and um, just in terms of what that might look like for Rock Sprays. So we can get a wee check. So it's going to be medium of sea and Rock Spray. Some, so yeah. One of the chances. Um, it depends. It depends where we land with that. So, for example, um, Cromwell in Alexandra, it's three stories. So, um, which is, I think it's, I think it's 11 metres. Um, 
that might it doesn't work in Clyde, so council decided that Clyde should be two. Uh, it might be that three might not work here either, so it's about working our way through that process. So there are some options there. In the plan we've got, in, in the proposed um, plan change 19, we've got both options. So Clyde is its own one and it's two-storied, and we've got Promo and, and um, Alexander, which is a three-storied. So just in the And who are the stakeholders? Um, it's a group of people that we, we're using them as a bit of a focus group because across sector there's um, some business people and some councillors and um, members of the community that um, come along. There's um, it's quite a mixture of people, yeah. and it's just it's only just to test our thinking. And they were there at the workshop, which was just to test it. So what will happen? What we're doing at the moment is is shortly I'll be showing you. We, we've kind of landed and give you a bit of feedback from that, that group the other night. Um, and then we go out to the whole community. So it's it's sort of thing it's really hard to do. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really hard thing to do in a town hall kind of meeting way. Yeah. Um, whereas we've tried to get quite a good cross section of people. Um, we had orchardists, we had um, business owners, um, members of the community. And so Try to get a bit of a cross section there, yeah, just to give us a bit of a feel for what that might look like. Um, no. So I think one of the things, um, Plan Change 19, the, um, the hearings we've set them down starting at the end of April. So there'll be um, eight days of hearings. There's April, and there's, there's um, six days in May as well. So we just get that because our, our elected members that are on the hearings panel also have day jobs. <laughs> so we've kind of staggered it out a little bit for them. Um, so they'll start making decisions by the end of May on what this looks like. Um, and I think one of the things really important about these processes is that when we put out um, a proposal that's certainly not a rubber stamp, um, the panel listens to the submissions and, and everybody gets an opportunity to say, they think they ask questions of the experts and then they make a decision on what's right. So I guess when we put it forward, it's our kind of best guess of what this might look like. And uh, we're generally asking for the community feedback on what, what they think. And the same with the um, Chicago Valley Spatial Plan. We're working on the engagement document at the moment. Um, so we'll touch base shortly with, the, with you and then we'll go to council for approval to notify that. We're talking about the spatial plan a little bit later. Yeah. yeah. So the so the, the plan change 19, the process here, you make a decision, that goes to the council and the council make the decision. Here in the panel, we've got a here panel, panel and, in April yeah. right, and then and then what's the next step after that? It becomes operative. There's an appeal process. Right. So the, the decision of the hearing panel goes to council and gets ratified. Um yeah. it has to go to council for ratification. Um, and then it becomes operative. We call it operative. Okay. That's when it's beyond challenge. But once the decisions are issued, there's an appeal period. So um, we have split it into two stages: the hearing, um, and that was intentional. And so that's around the provisions and then the signings. We do have a couple of areas where there's a bit of heat on um, what people want, and in Cromwell in particular, and Bannockburn. Um, and so by splitting it into two stages, although They'll be kind of run, you know, sort of yeah. one after each other. Um, it just means that we can make parts of it more productive, yeah, without get the it. whole thing getting yeah. held up, and um, and then we just manage um, what what appeals we might get. So yeah. So you're thinking that mid mid year you'll be at a point where you're waiting for appeals, is it? Yeah, I think that that's probably a reasonable. Okay. In July, but that's probably a reasonable expectation to get some decision about that. Yeah. yeah. How do, you, how do we know what council's looking for? Because when you, when you look at what's happening now in a lot of our cities, Hamilton, Christchurch, Auckland, they're all going for these 15 minutes, you know, this, this whole 15 minutes, and everything you need is going to be within 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. cycle walk, mm -hmm. you know. So are you looking at putting that into, into these smaller areas and working on it? Because it's, it's hard for us as a community to make a decision. Mm -hmm. When we don't know what you're thinking. Yeah. So um, just that well, the spatial plans inform us of that. And one of the things that we've got to show shortly, um, Wayne's got them there when we had that discussion, 
is that um, for Roxburgh in particular, we've got 400 metre walking through the centre. So there's a circle we put in there, and that's your kind of active area where you've got a commercial area, and that's where people walk. So 400 metres is what the urban yeah. designers say is comfortable for that medium density slash commercial areas. So that's actually on the spatial plans. And that's more about the, that walking distance is more about where you put those zones. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think and, and the only other thing I'd like to mention is that we've also developed some medium density guidelines. So that medium density housing, um, it was really important to council that that we made sure that we were going to get um I don't want to say quality housing because that implies um something else, but but just where there's access to light and, and good amenity and um, connectivity and walking and cycling and that kind of stuff. So the medium density guidelines help with that. And um, we also brought through at the same time uh, through Plan Change 20 heritage guidelines. It's something that we've been working on for a few years with Dr. Glenn Hazelton, who um, somewhere the work in Dunedin. Um, and so that, that was considered to be quite important. Um, in the context of bringing medium density into Clyde in particular, and, and how we manage what that outcome might look like. So there's been quite a lot of work. It's a pretty complex piece. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Um, well, thank you for that. I'll just. Uh... We'll move that we receive Anne's report. I second that. Thank you, Mark. All in favour say aye. Those against? Carried. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, are you awake? I am um, absolutely <laughs> awake and attentive. Mr. Chairman? So apologies for not being at the last meeting, members, but I was attending other matters outside the district. Since then, though, I've been at a number of things within the ward for reporting. On the 3rd of February, I was fortunate enough to get to speak to both the friendship group and later in the day, the rest home residents. Although I shouldn't say speak to because I prefer to go there and listen. Um, I always try to sort of talk for about a third of the allocated time and then let questions go for the other two thirds. There are really good numbers at the friendship group, and as when they, with any of these things, the questions were where the gold lies, and Onslow was quite a topic amongst the broad range. And the same applied at the rest home. And I got a letter coming to me later on from the residents as to the things that I'd like to see done around the town, which I um, moved on to the appropriate departments. Um, 8th of February, I attended the Roxburgh Business Breakfast. Numbers were well down on the usual for that group. That may be a seasonal thing, but I hope it doesn't continue because it's usually very well attended. It's a great networking event and I find it really handy to find out what's happening in that part of the community. Really enjoyed attending the Mount Benjamin show and getting around chatting to so many locals and visitors. It's been a long time between attending these, so it's great to be back. On the 23rd, Professor Earl Bardsley was in the area and myself, Chair Norman Lanham, met up with him. Earl was the promulgator of the Onslow concept. He was the first to come up with it. Um, he continues to push or it to be used as an irrigation and or fresh drinking water source on top of storage for generation. Got some really visionary ideas in that regard. Of course, on the Onslow topic, now 15.7 billion um, and another two plus years before we get a final answer, well, at least in this government on the project. And also on the 23rd, I had the privilege and pleasure of welcoming and listening to Lance Burdett, who spoke in Roxburgh on resilience at the invitation of the Rural Support Trust. It was a very enjoyable and enlightening event, and there could have been, should have been, to be frank, uh, more people there, uh, given the stress communities are under. And on the 29th, it was bloody brilliant to go to the cavalcade at Miller's Flat with my Mokopuna. A uh, great event, very well run by the organisers and well hosted by the people of the village. And that, as far as the Cheviot's concerned, um, apart from occasionally hanging out at 103 and having a coffee or whatever, is pretty much it. Bring COVID back from the from the hoedown. Hey, didn't get COVID from the hoedown. Didn't go to the hoedown. Everybody else did. <laughs> no, truly. Really. Didn't didn't make that. It's something oh, else on that. Oh dear. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So okay, so um, we'll just move that the board receives the mayor's report. 
Those in favor say aye. Aye. Carried. Here's the report. Nice me. <laughs> um, so we've reached the, the end of the second quarter of our first year as a board, and I'm confident of the fact that how long it's taken us to get up and get the steam and get some initiatives under. Six months into it, we're still um, contemplating what we should be doing. <laughs> but um, in the last, I guess, uh, couple of or a week or so, I've sort of given some thought on to how to, um, I guess, get the momentum in, in, in place, and that has taken some effect today, which has been. Good to thank you, Bill. Yeah. We're organised in that. Um, as we all know, we're sort of looking to support organic growth, building the general wealth and well-being of our community, and above all, the main focus is aiming at um, green spaces. And as we've spoken about again today, um, we're alongside. The prospect of late also taking shape, we do need to be able to accommodate that organic growth and, and focus our efforts on it. And moreover, um, we're going to, how we're going to enable it as a board. So, yeah, the spatial plan is coming coming together for us, as Anne's going to talk about it in a wee while. And we're looking forward to that being completed and giving us. Uh, you know, like a, a, a blueprint. Um, also, yeah, in the past six weeks, I've um, attended, as near Tim pointed out, a discussion with you, largely uh, and Nick, around the professor's expanded view of the use of the water that's going to be in, or proposed to be installed in Lake Onslow. Yeah. supporting some research into further storage and water distribution for irrigation and floodplain management and drinking water solutions as far as the Tari plains, as far out as the Tari plains, which is an interesting concept. Um, I joined the team at the AMP show spreading the word about the revisions to the waste management system. And I've also attended a number of community group meetings associated with the Ross Brent Town Centre and the rest home of the Cavalcade and um, other uh, you know, uh, activities in the community. Um, in general, I've had some inquiry over the state of the road shoulder on State Highway 8 in front of King George Park, as some of the others have as well. As I'm looking at how we reach out to Waka Katahi to see what they can do about that. It's not the council's responsibility, as I'm aware. Mm -hmm. um, but it is becoming um, hard to navigate, even with a vehicle. And there's so many trucks pulling in there nowadays that it uh, just chews it out big time. And other than that, thanks to <coughs> the communications to the community around service requests. I seem to have been getting approached less and less for to go and um, cut long grass and do the things and so forth, which is good. So I'm hoping that process is evidence of, of that process working. Uh, all in all, it's been uh, a good second quarter, and um, I'm looking forward to getting our plan, our strategic plan in place. Let's move that my report be accepted. I'll be received, bro. I'm of that. Yep. All those in favour say aye. 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 All those against? Carried. Okay. Telling stuff. So. Yep. So on the 11th and 18th of February, I was at the waste minimisation tent at Mount Benjamin. Um, AMP show and at Central Otago AMP show. 
general feedback was pretty positive. On the 23rd of February, I had a run through with um, Derek from emergency management here in this building. Um, and I can report that we have a spar link here. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, we have diesel heater, lights, first aid kits, fuel, a generator and a VHF radio. So it would be good at some point, maybe if we all did a bit of a run through to know what's in the building. Um, on the 23rd of February, um, I had Curtis, Hannett, and Megan and Joshua Bodding from Sanders Road up towards Lake Onslow um, contact me um, due to the condition mm. of the road. And so that um, actually resulted in um, Quinton doing a, um, a drive over that area. And I do have quite a lot of information on it in an email, but I'd be happy to send it through to you so that you could get a little bit of context on it. Um, Quinton, yeah, I believe, is he? Um, but the road was really, really slick and um, they were having serious problems driving the road up there. But apparently it, with the roading surface after the first rain, then it does um, bed down and become a good surface. So he went down and checked against that part of the road against um, roads that they'd done earlier down the Miller's Flat and they were all holding up really well. So he went back with quite a detailed um, plan to those owners that had come to me. So which road is that, sir? Saunders Road. So when you got Wright's Road yeah. and you've got Smith's Road that comes up as well, it's right at that junction and then Saunders Road goes off from Wright's Road towards Lake Onslow for a while before it gets to Three Brothers. So is that a similar problem that they've had at um, Bowman Station? Was it Bowman? Correct. Bowman Station. Yeah. So, and it mm. seems like... Okay, I can read a little bit for you if you want, but um, I did some test strips and the test strips that they did have performed really well. Uh, and yeah, and it seems like I said, it seems like it um, was due to in, um, insufficient drying time um, from when that surface went down and we got some heavy rain. So I believe that um, it should write itself and I'm happy to send you the whole report. So we seem to be getting a lot of feedback for that. Yeah. Roads mm -hmm. in our district. But <laughs> we're using a new, is it, using a new process or a new gravel one? Of yeah. yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, and it's taking a bit of time to be done. And the other thing is, um, so it's not that these aren't the only roads that have got issues. No. The issues with um, Mount Hope Station Road, um, Waikaya Bush Road. There's always been raised in my, on, on my radar. So that's probably different to what this, what this is. Yeah. Whether, I mean, under, under the banner of road, we've still got. Yeah, so this could be a conversation on about a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the conversation yeah. I've already been here. Yeah. 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 So, sort of like, uh, rather than having that treated in isolation, we just, just get, get, get the road and guys together and, and hatch a plan for it. Mm -hmm. okay. so it seems to be a common thing. Yeah. 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 Whether it's the same sort and it, of stuff. And, it was, and it, was a real, it was a real concern for those, yeah. for those affected people, yeah. for sure. Um, I also had um, Mark Simcock. Um, apparently, he might have spoken to you as well, Norman, about, about Sim. Sim, sorry, about Sim. Yeah, wrong. Mm. Yeah, about Commission's Flat Road, so mm -hmm. the road down to his property. Yeah. Um, do you know what conversation you had with him? Well, he's been gravelling it. Yeah. It's and trying to get um, some determination on ownership of the road and ownership and responsibility for maintenance. And it sits in no man's land, yeah, as far as right. he's concerned. And he has been doing it up to now, but feels that council should pick up the bill for it. So, and I went to people about that one too, and apparently it's not a formed legal road, but I understand where Mark's coming from because cyclists are going down 
to get onto the cycle trail there. And there's quite a bit of traffic that goes down that road. Yeah. 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 And he's just been maintaining that tunnel here in yeah. the neighbor. Yeah. But they're um, looking for a council contribution to it. Yeah. So I haven't spoken to you about that yet either. So. Okay. Again, it's on that list okay. of roading things. Okay, so I have, so you could bring up with them as well. And what was his response? That it's not a legal formed road. No, if it's not a legal formed road, only council might have a role. Okay. Okay. Yes, that would be the response. Mm -hmm. huh? you're not, you're, it's not the response that needs to be. Yeah, so I the, believe that. It could be an issue because obviously with the cycle trail going down there as exactly. well. So if the road's not maintained and then the cyclists can't get down there, then you would have an issue getting to the cycle trail as well. Yeah. The um, just very common too, cycle trails are the kids. Yeah. They see the base yeah. of trust. Mm. Yeah. Once again. So I think Stephen might have been talking to him as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I believe. Well, I, I, yeah, I haven't. Um, he hasn't spoken to me about it. <clears throat> Um, on the 15th of March, I attended a pool meeting and um, progressing along really well. Um, we should be finished around the middle of May, I believe. So, um, yeah, it's going really, going really well. Um, we've signed off pretty much on everything now. So we're yeah, just getting down to getting the last. What sort of heating is it going to have? It's going to have uh, a solar system. Yeah. And the solar system is 50 kilowatts, and it will be having heat pumps. So the solar system will be having to run the heat pumps. Okay. So it'll be heated to I think 28 degrees. So the solar system is is power generation. Yeah. 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 Not not water heating. It's power generation. Yeah. yeah. And we um, are able to sell our power back to the grid for a spot market rate during winter when we're not using the pole. It's great. Right. Yeah, cool. so we're actually been making some money over the winter when we're not using it. Mm. And what's the management structure of it once it's operating? If so we will get a um, yep. So we'll get a um, we've got a committee at the moment that is building the pool, and then we'll have a committee that will be running the day to day pool, including lessons and. and the pool's owned by a trust. Yeah, and the pool's owned by a trust. And then you'll be having full time staff. Um, we will be having, usually we have part time. Yeah. Yep. yep. Pull attendance. Sort of yeah, there'll be pull attendance here. Great. Yep. Sounds good. Um, 16th of March, I attended a spatial plan update. Um, I also did go and help at the cavalcade and I went to the Lance Burdock, Burdock talk. Um, in terms of council, we had a meeting on the 8th of March. And just one thing that I was going to bring up that um, has effect to this district is the um, district funding model for museums. So they um, presented three options to us. One was to um, the status quo, who was the digitization of all museum expenses, which would be property and grants. And the third option was just the digitization of grants funding. Um, and Currently, the Tibet gets about 22k annually grant to help run the museum. So there's another paper coming back to council in April with further discussion around that. Could you send me any information on that, seeing as I'm on the committee? That, that yep. Tibet only is for Yes. Yep. And the other thing that we decided at that meeting, um, some of you may have been aware of the wilding conifer control policy and it was decided not to allow staging of tree removal um, on council land as per the policy. Um, last night on the 22nd of March I was invited to speak at town and country um, dinner and they specifically wanted me to talk about the rubbish the new waste system so I'm very excited to talk to them about that as well as a few other things. And that's Ooh, me. Did they receive it well? They did actually, yeah, they're really great. Yeah, and I, we talked a little bit about emergency management planning, um, gave them a full update, special plan update. Cool. Uh, they were really, yeah, really good. Thank you. Russell. Hi, um, I attended a, 
uh, meeting in Lawrence to determine the, the recipients of um, a three thousand dollar grant, <clears throat> and uh, that went well. And we appointed two people, uh, both from the Lawrence area, um, to that. Um, other than that, I uh, haven't really done anything um, except uh, field requests from members of the public to do the odd thing like plant more trees and um, uh, perhaps lower the um, traffic speed through the main street to say 40k. Um, not start as not, not a way out at uh, the hill, uh, but <laughs> in a township. Um, <laughs> I'd be happy with that, um, but I don't know how we go about it. Um, one of my concerns is the St George Park um, bitumen, where the bitumen eats the, eats the grass, there's a whole lot of potholes and things, yeah. and recently they've attempted to sell it, but it really wants a gutter right along there, and uh, I don't know how we press for that, because presumably it's Waka Kokahi's um, responsibility not the councils, but that should occur. Um, there are some trees. There's a tree missing in the park which commemorates 50 years since World War Two. <clears throat> it's died and not being replaced. It's been like that for a while. Should get onto that, and uh, I would like to see some more trees planted along the verge by the golf course. But uh, like what it looks like as you go out of Milton on the way to the Neden. Um, it's nicely landscaped and um, for some time, quite, quite a um, few miles. But uh, that's really all I'm involved with. Okay. Sure. Uh, not a lot. I've had two um, medical centre meetings, and like I said, they're just, they're just going into their, into their new positions. Um, with the new way that everything's been run. And I've been to one um, year home meeting, West Home meeting, and it's one that goes through its own problems and challenges. So, yeah, on the 10th of February, I went to a meeting at Lumsden with the local body reform, Jim Palmer and Co. And that was not a very well received meeting with some very, very angry people with what's happening with local government reform, especially dropping the age to 16. So, evidently, that group had its own um, survey, and it sounds like the kids were between the ages of 18 to 14. So, I'd actually like to see the results of that survey, seeing as they're working for us. <clears throat> so, the, yeah, the, mm. this, the most when it comes to the reforms that haven't been spoken about. Well, Thanks, Marcus. Um, I've uh, been to a couple of museum committee meetings. Um, got a Roger Lusby playing on the 14th of April, so all of you buy your tickets to come along for that. Um, it's fundraising, so they're going to focus on progressing through their plan to develop the museum. Going to take about a few years, I think. Well, it's why I'm ready to go, but pretty uh, active committee. Um, I've been to a couple of Pivot Prospects meetings. One thing that they talking about, they're pretty keen on the mountain bike track on Brovers Hill. So I'd just like to see how we could you know, mm. dovetail into that and get some uh, yeah. get some plans together for for a design for mountain bike track. I'm not quite sure how. That, how to progress that forwards. Um, so um, I've been speaking to some people um, on that as well. Um, yeah, the community meetings in Mills Platt, one of the things uh, we had a community policing presentation today, and then we also talked about rabbits. There was a rabbit, um, people from the rabbit, well, not rabbit board, rabbit board doesn't exist anymore, but um, it's actually the ORC came to talk about rabbit control because it's a big thing in the in the district, and um, it appears that everyone's responsible for their own rabbits these days. And so we're talking about forming a group down there that's a sweat rabbit group, okay. and um, then seeing how we can progress to get some rabbit control going. Um, 
Uh, it's an ORC issue, uh, but they don't have anybody that shoots rabbits anymore. They had three people come present to us, and one was the manager, one was the supervisor, and one was the planner. Um, and um, but you know, it was some useful information. And basically, they're saying that uh, there's no there's no silver, uh, no bullets, well, no silver bullet. Um, but fencing is a start, and once you Got some fencing going, you can get some some poisoning and you can get some shooting going. But but unless you're cohesive as a community, yeah. you know, all you're doing is is well only my cat was a good rabbit, huh? Yeah. Um so um been to a couple of spa uh, spatial plan meetings. That's very interesting. Cavalcade was good, didn't get COVID. Um, <laughs> And fish day. and the, the big topic is the gold mine. Some people are very, very worried about it, and very concerned, and so I really want to be at the, at the tip end of that as to you know, where the council's at. And, um, the guys working in the, in the gold mine seem very nice. The owner and manager seem very nice people. Um, and uh, I think if you live right next door to it, you'd be very, very nervous. Noise seems to be the biggest issue, just the continual hum up with, of, the, of the machinery running. Which is no louder than traffic going past, but if it's continuous, mm. that's that's a real nuisance. So it doesn't breach any noise regulations, but it's just there all the time, mm. and that that's quite hard to stomach. Mm. Um, and I have some sympathy for those people. That's it, Gloss. Thank. Thank you. I just means that we um, see those members' reports. I have a second, please. I'll second it. Second my report. Those in favour of those reports being received, say aye. Aye. Thanks. Aye. Carried. Thank you. Oh, okay. Um, How's it going? Oh, Just yeah. yep. um, uh, if anyone's got anything they've got to query about those, um, all the information, so you don't need to go through them line by line. If not, I'll move that we receive that report on the second of post. Mm -hmm. All those in favour say of that report being received say aye. 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 Those against say no. Aye. What determines if something goes on that before? Uh, so basically, what it is is that if it, it's all your reports that have happened before. So if there was a decision to be made, um, so it's in the see here in the golf club. Yeah, so that was the decision yeah. that was made, and then that was an update yeah, right. until such time as it's finished. Right. <clears throat> so that's that. Go, that's what goes on it. So, so for instance, so for instance, uh, something that's happened today will go on this for next time. The Brankstone Street thing can go on there. What? Correct. Really? Yeah. Yep. Next hour. Works. <clears throat> and months. then it'll be there until such time as it's completed, yeah. and then uh, it'll come off. Well, it will say matter closed, so you can be happy that it's completed. Then it will come off. Right. Thank you. Okay, so we're up to late of the next meeting. Late. Which is what? Basically. Star Wars Day. Huh? <laughs> Star Wars Day. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> may the ball from good. May. Yes, I'll be looking forward to May. Yes. I'll come as we want. <laughs> I'll look forward to okay. it. So, this is the part of the meeting where we resolve to exclude the public. So, move that we um, exclude the public from the part of the meeting. Class, the time of the other main meeting. Part two. Well, uh, the, the meeting was done. Too. Yeah. Okay, so, the meeting is confidential. Okay, give us a minute. 